Welcome back, WTDU students. We are on lesson two of Leaf Springs. All right, so now we are on number four. How does the arc affect the leaf spring? So the arc of a leaf spring can have an effect on the actual spring rate of it. So the spring rate refers to the amount of force that is required to compress or extend the spring by a certain distance. It's gonna determine how stiff or how soft the spring actually is. The arc of a leaf spring influences its stiffness and load carrying capacity. A flatter or less curved leaf spring will typically have a lower spring rate, meaning it's going to give you a softer ride, which is more flexible. So on the other hand, a leaf spring with a tighter arc, more curve, will have a higher spring rate, making it stiffer and less flexible. This higher spring rate allows the leaf spring to support heavier loads while maintain stability under increased weight or stress. Now, by adjusting the arc of the leaf spring, manufacturers like us can fine tune the spring rate to match the specific vehicle requirements, the load carrying capacity, and then we can modify the curvature and the number of leaves in the stack to achieve the desired spring rate and suspension characteristics. Wow, kind of seems like those guys at Weld Tech Designs know what they're doing when it comes to springs. Well, they got a lot of help from spring manufacturers that have been doing this for nearly a hundred years. And that's the benefit in using a company like Weld Tech Designs to build you a progressive spring rate for your van or RV. Now we're at number five. How does the thickness affect the leaf pack? So the number of springs in a leaf spring system can affect the overall spring rate. Generally, increasing the number of springs in a stack tends to increase the spring rate, making the spring stiffer. Now, when leaves are added to a leaf spring stack, the overall stack becomes thicker and stiffer. The increased stiffness results in a higher spring rate, meaning more force is required to compress or extend the springs by distance. Now, on the other hand, reducing the number of springs in a stack can decrease the overall spring rate, making the spring or the suspension softer with fewer leaves. The stack becomes thinner and more flexible, resulting in a lower spring rate and a more compliant suspension. The number of springs used in a leaf spring system is a design consideration that depends on various factors, such as a vehicle's weight, intended load carrying capacity, the desired ride quality, the suspension performance requirements, and people like us really take careful consideration to select the number of springs in order to achieve the desired balance between load carrying capacity stability and ride comfort. When it comes to the thickness of the leaf pack, now we've learned that as we add additional leaf springs to the pack, it's going to increase the spring rate. And as we remove springs from the leaf pack, it's going to decrease the spring rate. So there's many companies out there that will offer additional straight cut leaf springs to add to your parabolic leaf pack. So this is going to do one of two things. First, it's going to increase the spring rate of your vehicle as well as lift the vehicle by the thickness of the leaf spring. So that's typically not how we do it here at Weld Tech Designs because we want to specifically build the leaf springs to the spring rate of your vehicle and your vehicle's weight and desired height that's going to be really important. All right, guys, we are into number six. We are moving right through this list and I hope that you are gaining a ton of education about leaf springs. And again, I ask you, please smash that subscribe button and join me here at WTDU classes. Leaf springs are gonna be used in a variety of vehicles, ranging from small trailers to heavy duty trucks. And here are some common types of vehicles that utilize leaf springs in their suspension systems. So trucks. Of course, we've seen them in pickup trucks. They're widely used, including commercial trucks, medium, and even the heavy duty trucks. The robust design of a leaf spring allows them to handle heavy loads and provide stability for those vehicles. SUVs, and of course, my favorite vans, right? Many SUV and vans enjoy 
leaf springs in their rear suspension system. Leaf springs offer sufficient load carrying capacity and durability, which makes them suitable for these vehicles that often carry passengers and or cargo. All right, next up we have trailers. Leaf springs are extensively used in various types of trailers, such as utility trailers, camping trailers, boat trailers, agricultural trailers. And that's what's great is the simplicity and load carrying capacity of a leaf spring make them a popular choice for trailer suspension. Leaf springs are commonly found in commercial vehicles like buses, delivery trucks, and specialized vehicles used in carrying construction, mining, or other industries. So these vehicles can often support substantial payloads and springs provide the necessary support and stability. We are on to my favorite part of this and that's gonna be off-road vehicles. So many off-road vehicles, including trucks, specialized off-road vehicles like Jeeps utilize leaf springs. The robust nature of the leaf spring helps in the handling of the rugged terrain and the shocks encountered during these off-road adventures. And now we're not talking about the actual shocks on the vehicle, we're talking about the energy or shock that this leaf spring is going to encounter when off-roading. The next topic is gonna be another one of my favorites and that's gonna be using them on vintage or classic cars. Now, like we discussed in the beginning of this is leaf springs have been used for a long time on vehicles, wagons, and those classic cars that we absolutely love. So I have a 1928 Model A that leaf springs were originally used on, and I really wanted to keep that classic look. A lot of collectors want to maintain or restore those vehicles using their original leaf spring design and keep that intact. I think that that is really great when you're trying to preserve the accuracy or the authenticity of how a car was actually built back in the day. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap up this class of WTDU. I thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope that you guys gained a ton of information about leaf springs in this video. I would encourage you to leave a comment down below and tell me what you learned in this video and possibly if I did miss something, leave that comment down below as well. I would love to maybe touch base on that in a future class session here at WTDU. So guys, I just wanna thank you so much. I'm Professor Johnson, or uh, you guys, my friends out there at WTDU, you can just call me Professor J, and I will see you guys in the next class. Class is dismissed.